Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at qualified business income deduction. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the limitation aspect of it. So in the prior session, so what I did in the prior session, I did an intro to QBI. So if you did not view the prior session, please see the description below and you'll find the link for this recording. It's around 17 minutes, but it's very important that you understand the reason and the basics for qualified business income deduction. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As I mentioned in the prior session, this topic is, is new, is not fairly new, it's totally new. So uh, it's giving a lot of students and a lot of CPA candidate problems. Hopefully I can simplify this process for you and make it less painful. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to link with me on LinkedIn. This is my LinkedIn account. If you are a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page and you are more than welcome to connect with me on a personal level. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I ha host all my lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, please share them, put them in playlist, let everyone knows about them. So if you're benefiting, other people can benefit as well. And I do have a Twitter account and a website on website on my website. I do organize my lectures by course and chapter. So it's much easier for you to navigate. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, Congress gave this 20% deduction which is, it's good, 20%. You're going to be saving a lot of, lot of money on your taxes. 20% of your either qualified business income, so it's 20% of QBI, or 20%, you're going to get 20% of your modified taxable income. That's great. But, but as always, Congress is a generous to a point. What does that mean? It means at some point, this 20% deduction, it will be either eliminated or reduced or eventually eliminated and under certain circumstances. So in this session, we're going to be talking about the limitation. And this is where it gives people some problems. Because generally speaking, it's easy to understand what qualified business income is. It's easy to compute modified taxable income, you know, multiplied by 20%, multiplied by 20%. The lower of these two is your answer. But when it comes, when you go into a phase out limitation, then complications will start to arise. So this is what we'll try to do in this session is to simplify this process. So once taxable income reaches a certain th threshold, section 199 impose, imposes two independent limitations. So we're going to have two independent limitation. We're going to work with each limitation separately. So this way we'll be able to handle them, um, to handle them and understand what's going on. So we're going to assume you're either single or married filing jointly. And here's what's going to happen. If you are single and your taxable income is below 157,500, guess what? You're going to get the 100% of the 20% deduction. You will get 20% of either the lower of your qualified business income or modified taxable income. However, between 157 to 207,500, which is a $50,000 range, this is called the range your deduction will start to decrease and we're, we're going to have to compute how okay this is this is called the range then once your taxable income exceeds a certain this amount and you're single then it's going to depend on whether you are a uh, an ssb specified service business which we'll talk about in a moment or you are a non ssb non specified service business okay and we'll, we'll we need to we need to clarify those two shortly if you are married filing jointly, the threshold is a little bit higher. As long as your income is below three, as long as your taxable income is below three fifteen, you're gonna get one hundred percent of the twenty percent deduction. Then you have a hundred thousand dollar range. This is the range. Up to four fifteen. Guess what? You're gonna your 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 twenty percent deduction will be reduced, and we'll see how we compute this. That once you exceed four fifteen, we have to determine whether you are an SSB or a non. SSB and let me make it, make it easier for you up front. If you are considered an SSB specified uh, service business, no more deductions. So if you are an SSB, that's it. You lose your deduction. Okay. But if you are a non SSB, then we have to do some computation. Okay. So one limitation is based on wages and capital investment. What's going to happen once you exceed the 207,500 and you are a non SSB? A non 
specified service business. And what is that? Well, here's what here's what SSBs are, specified service businesses. Specified service businesses are doctors, dentists, lawyers, accountant, consultant, investment advisor, entertainer, and athletes. What is common between all of those? The, uh, the ability of the owner is what's really driving the business. So if you're a doctor, it's your services. If you're a dentist, it's your services what, what's driving the business. So it's the personal initiative of the owner is what the business is all about. For example, I run my own YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is considered a specified service business because without me, my channel cannot run on its own. It's, a, it's called a specified business service. So my my individual effort is basically the majority of the of the business therefore it's considered a specified service business simply put once my taxable income reaches above 415 i don't i cannot i cannot take the qualified business income deduction why because i'm i'm a specified service business okay and if i'm single and once it exceeds 207500 that's it I, I can no longer deduct it Okay, so hopefully this will make it easier for you, whether you're an SSB or a non-SSB. Just FYI, engineers and architects are not subject to limitation. Who knows, you might see a question on the CPA exam, you know, telling you engineers. Well, engineers, they are not considered an SSB as well as architect. So who knows, you could. So simply put, if your taxable income before qualified business income deduction is, is less than the threshold, the limit does not apply. So as long as your income is below the threshold below 157500 or 315 the limit does not apply whether your business is an ssb or a non ssb so it doesn't matter you'll get the 20 percent deduction and this is how you get the deduction in general the deduction is 20 percent of qualified business income or 20 percent of the modified taxable income we saw this computation in the first lecture in the first lecture which is you can see the the link in the description this is what i showed you when the when no limit applies i just showed you how to compute this so it's basically straightforward if you don't make a lot of money you'll get the 20 percent deduction no limitation you're good to go if you are more than the threshold amount if you are more than the threshold amount well it depends if you are more than the threshold amount it depends if you're an ssb an ssb is somebody like me then that's it no deduction if you are a non if you are a non ssb well the irs is going to give you a deduction based on your w2 wages and capital investments so based on the amount that you pay to employees the w2 wages other than yourself so you cannot pay yourself you can pay yourself but you cannot count those w2 wages or capital investments which we're going to define those two terms anyway what happened if you are in between? What happened if you fall within the what, what what happened if you fall within the range? Well, we're gonna see how we compute this shortly. We're gonna see how we compute this shortly. So the limitation based on the wages and capital investments, assuming you are a non-SSB. Now, why do they want to give you a deduction? They want to give you a deduction because they want to encourage you to pay wages, to have employees, because employees, as we have employees, we pay the employees, employees spend money. When they spend money, they create jobs. When they create jobs, it hires more people. When we hire more people, we create more jobs, so on and so forth. And capital investment, it's basically, it's the tangible property so they want you to have tangible asset they want you to have uh, property plant and equipment and the, how do you acquire property plant and equipment you buy them so the government wants you to hire employees and buy property plant and equipment if you have those two guess what and you are a non-SSB you don't lose your your business deduction we're gonna give you some deduction okay it's it's gonna be reduced but it, nevertheless it's a deduction so here's how the limit work limitation based based on wages and capital investment and here's what's going to happen we're going to limit the 20 percent qbi to the greater of so we're going to look at the greater of 50 percent of w2 wages and this is usually it's used if you are labor intensive you're going to have w2 wages or they have another formula 25 percent of the w2 wages paid by qualified trade or business plus 2.5 of the taxpayer share of unadjusted basis of qualified property that's a lot of wording we're going to work an example simply put for the second scenario it's 25 percent of w2 or 2.5 or 2.5 of uh, of uh, qualified property qp qualified property which is, it means if you have more qualified property, the second number might give you a higher deduction.
again, we'll see this in an example. Don't worry. It's a lot of percentages. What does the W-2 wages include? It does not include your W-2 wages. It includes total amount of wages subject to income tax withholding, compensation paid into qualified retirement account, and certain other form of deferred compensation. So any compensation you paid, whether it's a qualified retirement or a deferred compensation, or obviously W-2, it's W-2 wages, but you cannot count your W-2 wages. What does the qualified property include? It includes depreciable, tangible. So notice, intangible are not counted. Intangible is not counted. And it has to be depreciable. Depreciable means land not counted in that. Land and intangibles are not counted, whether it's real or personal. So real means building okay or personal machinery equipment that is used by the qualified trade or business during the year and whose depreciable period has not ended before the end of the taxable year so it's still being depreciated so it's still being depreciated now the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example otherwise this is a bit confusing so let's work start slowly and uh, build our uh, tolerance for this okay let's start slowly okay so land and intangible asset are not do not qualify. So let's take a look at this simple example. And this is there's no limitation here, but it's a good review kind of to start up. OK, uh, Simone, a married taxpayer operates a business as a sole proprietary. The business has one employee who's paid eighty thousand um, dollars during 2018. So they have one employee and they have W2. We have W2 wages of eighty thousand dollar assume the business have no significant asset they don't have any tangible asset during 2018 the net income of simone's business amounted to two hundred and thirty thousand and the modified taxable income is 250 so modified taxable income equal to 250 net income net income equal to 230 since Simone's taxable income before QBI deduction is below the income threshold for married taxpayer filing joint return, remember for married filing joint return, it's, it goes from 315 the taxable income to 415. So they're good. Their modified taxable income is 250. It's below. It's below. Therefore, they're gonna they're gonna qualify for the 20 percent 20 percent QBI. Okay. Since Simone's taxable income before QBI is below the income threshold for married taxpayer filing joint return. The W-2 capital investment limitation does not apply. As a result, we're going to take the either 20% of 20% of MTI, modified taxable income, or 20% of net income, which is here. It's going to be the qualified taxable income, 20%. Okay, and this is going to give us 230 uh, times 20%. That's going to give us 50,000. No, this is 230 times it's 46. This is this is 46,000 and this is going to be 50,000. So our deduction is qualified business income deduction is 46,000. Pretty straightforward. So this example, what are we saying in this example? Whether this business is an SSB or non SSB, it doesn't really matter why. Let me show you why. Because the taxable income of the of, of this couple of this couple married filing jointly falls here below 215. So this is pretty straightforward, nothing to it. Let's add, let's start to add complication, not complication, let's add, let's start to add the limitation rule to it. Okay. Assume the same fact in the previous example, except that net income from the proprietary ship amounts to half a million and modified adjustable income is 600,000. This is also called taxable income before QBI. Now what happened, taxable income hopefully you can see this, is greater than 415, greater than the limit, okay? And we're going to assume this business is a non-SSB. Non if this was an SSB, that's it. They're, we don't have to keep going. They don't have any deduction. So we're going to assume this is non-SSB. So as Simone taxable income before QBI deduction exceeds 415, here's what's going to happen. Simone's QBI deduction is 40,000. How do we comp comp compute this 40,000? We'll take 20,000 times the qualified business income. So we're going to just do the qualified business income. QBI, we take QBI times 20%. QBI is half a million times 20% is 100,000. Or we're going to take 50% of W-2 wages, which is 80,000 times 50%, which will give us 40,000. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to have to choose between 
40,000 and 60,000, but there's one more limitation. Whatever number we got in those, they, it cannot exceed. Remember here, this is basically the overall limitation. Overall limitation. The overall limitation, I talked about it in the prior chapter. You cannot have more than 20% of modified taxable income. Modified taxable income is 600,000 times 20%. Whether any answers you get in any of those in one or two, if it exceeds 20% of modified taxable income, modified taxable income is 600,000, which is given. Usually it's given to you or you have to compute it. It cannot exceed that. So here we have 40. We have basically, we have to choose between 100,000, which is 20% of QBI, or the wage limit, 40,000. So one, two, but remember three, they, they both cannot exceed 120 and neither exceed 120. So basically three is not, not, not at, you know, we don't have to worry about it because they both don't exceed. Therefore, the deduction is 40,000. Pretty straightforward, or I hope so. Let's work another example. So notice in this example, because when I showed you the formula, I told you we have to look at 50% of W-2 or 25% of W-2 wages. Now between those two, we have to choose the greater of those two to compare it to 20% of QBI. But we did not have any we did not have any tangible asset. So this example had no tangible asset or qualified property. Not tangible asset. Sorry. They could have tangible asset. They don't have qualified property because they told us here no significant asset. So they don't have any qualified property. Now let's take a look at an example where do they do have a qualified property. So you see how this works. And look, this example, we're going to see it again. We're going to see it again. So let's take a look at this example. T and E, Tom and Elaine, are married and file, file a joint return. Their taxable income before QBI deduction is half a million. This is also called modified taxable income. Notice their taxable income is above the limit, uh, ab I'm sorry, above the threshold. So notice here we're going to have to do some computation. They have 400,000 in QBI from a restaurant. Well, the first thing I do, if they, if they give me my QBI, I would say I'm going to take my QBI times, which is my 400,000, times 20%. This is one of the numbers that I need. This is equal to 80. 80,000. So this is this this is the first computation. Okay. They have employed they have they have employed four individual, a cook, a bartender and a wait staff during the year and paid them 150,000 in W2 wages. They have W2 wages. So this is like basically this is the first computation one. Then the second computation I have W2 so I'm going to take my W2 150,000 multiplied by 50% and that's going to give me 75,000. So this is the second computation I need to compute 75,000. They own a building in which the restaurant is located. They bought the building with its furniture and fixture four years ago for 600,000 and the land worth 100,000. So the unadjusted acquisition basis for the building furniture and fixture is 500,000. In other words they have Qualified property of 500,000. Why 500 and not 600? Because of the 600,000, this this is land. Land, we don't count the land. Well, we're going to have to do another computation under number two, and that's 25% times 150,000 plus 2.5% times half a million. So if we do this computation, and we do this computation, it's going to give us all in all, fifty thousand dollar. Now, between those and two, notice in 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 two, in this in this computation, we have uh, a seventy five thousand, b fifty thousand. So, what do we choose in between two? We choose the greater of these two. So, when we do when we do the overall computation, when we do the overall comparison, basically the fifty thousand we computed, but we don't need it because it's lower than seventy five. Therefore, we're going to look at seventy five, and the last overall limitation is the uh, the uh, qualified business deduction cannot exceed 20% of modified taxable income our modified taxable income is half a million it's half a million times 20% which is equal to 100,000 so this is basically number 3 number 3 now we have to compare 1 and 2 1 is 80 1 is 80,000 2 is 75. We have to choose the lesser of these two. But those two cannot exceed 100,000. They don't. Therefore, the deduction is 75,000. Therefore, the deduction, the QBI deduction, is 75,000. And if you want a cleaner computation, this is 20% times 400,000. 
then we'll do the W two ages. Then we do the so this is number two, number two, this is A, and this is B. And remember between A and B, we choose the between A and B, we choose the greater of A and B. So this is A and this is B. So when we when, when we're doing our comparison, we choose the greater. Then when we do the the final comparison, we we use the lower. We use the lower. Okay? We use the lower. Let's take a look at a rental property example where no employees, where the company has no employees. They have simply no employees. Okay. Jay, a single taxpayer, owns a five-unit apartment building that he purchased five years ago. His unadjusted basis in the building, which is the purchase price minus the value of, of the land, is half a million, which is this is what we call qualified property in this for our purposes. He has a taxable income before QBI deduction of 250000 during 2018. This is also called modified taxable income. And he has no employees in his business and his, his QBI is 220. So what we do is first, we'll take 220, which is QBI times 20%, and we're gonna get 44,000. This is our first figure. Then we're gonna take 50% of W2, in, which is zero because this individual, Jay doesn't employ anyone. And there was a big, there was a big discussion if rental property should be considered QBI or not. I guess the IRS, you know, it's either they clarify it or they, they, they're gonna keep it up to the taxpayer. But simply put, if you have a rental property, it's considered a qualified trade. Therefore, 50% of W2, this individual does not have W2. And this is where this, this second computation works because now they have asset. 25% of W2 is also zero, but 2.5% of the buildings, which is half a million of the apartment building, they get 12,500. 12, so this is 12,500. Now we compare 12,500 to 44,000 and the lower is 12,500. And we wanna make sure that under the third limitation, we don't exceed 20% of modified taxable income. Modified taxable income is 250, 20% is 50,000. So therefore the deduction is 12,500. So the QBI deduction is 12,500. Let's take a look at, addition, at, at additional examples. Ashley, okay, a single taxpayer, the owner of ABC Company, the LLC treated as, as a sole, as a sole proprietorship, report QBI of 900,000, okay? That is not a specified service business. If this was an SSB, I'm done. There is no deduction, okay? So one, I'm gonna take 900,000 times 20%. 180. This is the first computation you have to make. ABC paid total wages of 300,000. I'm going to start with the second computation. 300,000 times 50% equal to 150. Okay. And the total unadjusted basis of the property held by ABC is, is, is 30,000. They also have tangible property. Therefore, I have to make another computation, which is 300,000 times... This is A, and now I'm working on B, times 25% plus 2.5% times 30,000. So this is 300,000 times times 25% is 75,000. 2.5% times 30,000, which is the which is the tangible property, that's 7, 750. So those two are equal to 75,000. 750 75,750 now between between a and b that's it i i can i can cross out b because i have to choose between the greater of those two then three whatever number i come up with it cannot exceed modified taxable income okay and taxable income before qbi is 740 this is the modified taxable income i'm going to take 740 times 20 percent equal to 148 so my deduction cannot exceed cannot exceed number three. This is why I do number three. So now, between 180, oops. Okay, between 180 and 150, which one is the lower? The lower is 150. However, 150 is greater than 148. Because 150 is greater than 48, I cannot take the 150, I have to take 148. In any case, and under any circumstances, deduction cannot exceed 20% of modified taxable income. Hopefully this, this example will show you why number three is important, because it cannot exceed 
20% of modified taxable income. Let's take a look at another example. Donald. Donald owns a wide variety of commercial... I wonder when they chose the word Donald, was it before President Trump or, or after? Uh, uh, Donald owns a wide variety of commercial rental property held in a single member LLC. It's interesting, it's also commercial rental properties. Um, Donald LLC report rental income of 1.5 million. That's that's the income. So that's the basically the QBI. This is the QBI. Well, let's start with this. So first, I'm going to take 1.5 million multiplied by 20%, and that's going to give me 300,000. Okay. The LLC pays no pays no W2 wages. Rather, it pays a management fee to an S corporation that Donald's control. Well, we don't have to worry about this, and simply put, we don't have W-2 wages, okay? I don't want to get into S-Corporation now, so we can hold on that. The management company pays W-2 wages, but it reports no income. So the management company, which is the S-Corp, which is, again, we don't have to worry about this. For, for the purpose of this example, we have no W-2. Donald total unadjusted basis of the commercial rental property is 10 million. So when we go to the second computation, second computation say A, W-2, which is zero, times 50% equal to zero, then zero, which is no wages, times 25%, this is B, equal to zero, plus we're going to take 10 million, which is the tangible property, times 2.5%, and that's going to give us 250,000. Now, the third computation is, um, is modified taxable income. Donald taxable income before QBI is 2 million. So we're going to take 2 million. We want to make sure we don't go over this times 20% equal to 400,000. Now, our computation is this. We're going to go compare those two, and the lower is 250. Then making sure 250 is less than 400, 250 is less than 400, we are good to go. Because 250 is less than 400, we are good to go. We are good to go. All right? Now, now we're going to talk about when the uh, the taxable income is between the phase out range figures. What do I mean by between the phase out range figures? Remember when, what what I talked about earlier when I when I looked at this. I told you. I told you, uh, simply put, I told you if we are if we are less than this amount, less than these amounts, uh, the limit does not apply. And I told you if we are more than these amounts depending whether we are SSB or non-SSB, there's a wage limit apply. Now, what happened if we are in between? Now, we're going to find out what happened if we are in between those two. In other words, we are in the range. Our taxable income is within the range. This is what we are talking about here. And let's see. Again, there's a formula that we have to go through, okay, to uh, figure out the, the problem, okay? If taxable income before QBI deduction is between the two amounts, and I told two amounts, which is within the range, and W-2 wages, capital investment portion of the QBI escape in the deduction, then the general 20% amount is used but reduced. So basically, the 20% deduction, which will take 20% times QBI, it's going to be used, but it's going to be reduced. So how do we compute this reduction? I'm going to show you the formula, and as always, I will always work two examples. Actually, I'm going to show you an example, then work another example, okay? Determine the difference. So what's going to happen first is we're going to determine the difference between the general 20% QBI and the amount of the W-2 wages capital investment amount. And when I say W-2 wages, I mean 50% of the W-2 wages. That's the first computation we are going to make. Then we're going to determine a reduction ratio. How do we determine the reduction ratio? We're going to take taxable income before QBI minus the threshold. The threshold could be depending on whether the individual is single or married, whatever the threshold is, it's either 207, 500, or 415, depending on what the threshold is, okay? Then divide it either by 100,000 if the person is married, filing jointly, or $50,000 if the, you know, other filers, single or other filers, okay? Then we get this reduction ratio. From this reduction ratio, we're going to determine the reduction in the W-2 wages limit. So we're going to take the reduction is computed as the difference between 1, whatever we get in 1, times the ratio in 2. Then, to determine the final QBI, we're going to take 20% of the QBI deduction minus what we computed in number 3. 
again, yes, this is a lot, but the only way to do this, though, <laughs> there's no other way around it. It's just simple computation. You just have to know where each number comes from, go through the computation, and find your final QBI. Now, if you are good with Excel, input all these figures in Excel and start to play with them. I'm going to... Uh, when I learned it, this is how I learned it. I sat down and I start to put everything in Excel, but I don't want to use Excel. I don't want to be flipping back and forth. So I'm going to show it to you. But if you are good with Excel, it's a good place to uh, to do to do so. OK, so let's take a look at the first example. If you remember Tom and Elaine, their marriage file and joint return. I told you you're going to see this example again. There it is. Their taxable income before QBI is half a million. This is also their modified taxable income. They have 400,000 in QBI. They have 400,000. Oops. And QBI from a restaurant they owned. Okay. And uh, they employed four individuals. They bought the building. All this stuff. You remember when we did the computation, we said their, their deduction is 75000 So what we did is we did 20% of QBI, took 50% of their W-2 wages. Then we took 2.25% of their W-2 wages plus 2.5% of the unadjusted qualified property. And between A... I'm sorry, between... A and B, basically we cross out B, we compare A, which is 75,000 to 80,000, then we make sure it didn't exceed 100,000, and you said their QBI is 7, 7, 75,000. In this example, remember, married filing jointly, the range is from 315 to 415. So this example assumes they their taxable income, where's their taxable income? their taxable income is 500,000. So their taxable income is here. So their taxable income is greater than the threshold. So this is what we did. Now I'm going to flip to the next slide and I'm going to make their taxable income in between the threshold. Okay. Now let's take a look at an example for the same couple, Tom and Elaine, but now we're going to we're going to see that their taxable income is within the within the range. Remember the range for married filing only from 315 to, to 415. Now, this couple, we're going to assume that their taxable income is 355, which is which is 40,000. We are 40,000 within the range. We're 40,000 within the range. Okay. Now, we're going to do the first. I'm gonna, we're going to do the computation as they are not within the range. Okay. Then we're going to do the computation when they are and they are in the range. So let's take a look at what would happen. So, but assume that their uh, Q, uh, taxable income before QBI is 355. This is also their modified taxable income. Their QBI is 320. So we're going to take 320 times 20 percent, which we're going to give us 64,000. And W-2 wages were 100,000. Their unadjusted basis is 500,000. So let's do the W-2. 100,000 times 20 percent is 50,000. 100,000 times 25 percent plus 2.5 percent of the of the qualified pro plus 2.5 percent of the qualified property gives us 12,500 so this is this is the two this is 2a and this is 2b remember when we have between a and b we'll choose the greater of 2a and 2b and the uh, and between a and one between 2a and one we have to choose the lower which is we we'll choose a but remember a 20% modified, um, the deduction cannot exceed 20% of the modified taxable income. Modified taxable income is 355 times 20%. It cannot exceed 71,000. So if they were outside the range, if they were outside the range, the deduction would have been 50,000. Okay? But that's not the case in this example. So we, it just showed you another example of assuming they were outside the range. But they're not. They're within the range. So what do we have to do if they are within the range? Okay? Here's what we have to do. We have to go through those four steps I just showed you earlier. Step one, determine the difference between the general 20% QBI amount and the W-2 wages capital investment amount. So 20% of QBI is 64,000, which is, we computed it up here, minus 50% of W-2. W-2 is 100,000, 50% is 50,000. So we're going to get to a number of 14,000. We call this number the excess the excess amount. This is step one. This is step one. Step two, we determine the reduction ratio. How do we determine the reduction ratio? We'll find out how much we are into the range. 
we are 40,000 into the range, which is the taxable income minus the threshold divided by 100,000 because they are married filing jointly. So the, the reduction ratio is 40%. This is step two. This is step two. Step three is to take step one, which is 14,000, the excess, step one times step two. Step two is 40,000. And this is the reduction amount. Then what's going to happen, the general 20% qualified business deduction is 64,000. We'll take the 64,000, the 20%, 20 percent of qbi okay minus step three which is step one simply put step one minus step three which is fifty eight thousand four hundred okay and we want to make sure fifty eight thousand four hundred is less than seventy one thousand which is twenty percent of modified taxable income which it is therefore the deduction the qbi deduction is fifty eight thousand four hundred so they did not get the full amount they got they did not get the 64,000 they got 58,400 not bad okay not bad but if they were outside the range I told you if they were outside the range they would get 50,000 if they were outside the range we did this computation okay the best way to work this actually is to look at another example to look at another example okay Scott and Laura are married and will file a joint return Scott owns a sole proprietorship not a specified service business that reports net income of 300,000. So this is basically QBI. So this is step one times 300,000 times 20% equal to 60,000. The proprietary ship pays W2 wages of 40,000 and hold property with an adjusted basis of 10,000. Now we can go through step two. Step two, A is 40,000 times 50% equal to 20,000 then 40,000 times 25% plus 2.5% 2.5% of 10,000 2.5% times 10,000 okay so if we add those two together they add up to be 10,250. So this is A and this is B. Remember, between A and B, we'll choose the greater, so just we can cross out B. Now we want to make sure that uh, between A and, between 2A and 1, we're going to choose 2A, but we have to make sure that it's not more than modified taxable income. Their modified taxable income is 375. So 375, this is number 3, times 20% equal to 75,000 so between so we are good with 2a so 2a is the um, is the qualified business income but hold on a second we're missing something here what are we missing remember this couple okay they have taxable income of 375 and what does that mean it means their taxable income is more than 315 but below than 415 so their taxable income is if you look at the ratio it's 60,000 within the range they're, this is the range the range is 100,000 they're 60,000 into the range so they're, they're above the threshold but they don't exceed therefore if they were outside if their taxable income taxable income was more than 415 the deduction would have been 20,000 but that's not the case here then we have to go th through another deduction the four steps step one we're going to take 20% of QBI, which is we already computed, the 60,000 minus 50% of W-2 wages. 50% of W-2 wages is 20,000, which, which is going to give us an excess. We call this excess of 40,000. We're going to go through step two. Step two, we're going to have to find the reduction ratio. The reduction ratio is we are 60,000 within the range. Why 60,000? 375 taxable income minus the threshold 315 that's 60,000 divided by 100,000 why 100,000 because they are married filing jointly so the reduction ratio is 60 percent step three take step one this is step three take step one which is the excess forty thousand dollar times the ratio which is 60 percent which is going to give us a twenty four thousand dollar reduction 
Now step four. Take take twenty percent of QBI, which is sixty thousand, minus the reduction, which is twenty four thousand, which will give us thirty six thousand. So notice, because they are within the range, they're going to get a higher deduction than if they were outside the range. If they were outside the range, their deduction would have been 20000 because they are within the range. They don't lose the whole thing. They would still get something, and that something is 36000 which is a lot, okay? Uh, um, but, uh, you know, otherwise, if they were below, and, and what happened if they, their taxable income, maybe I should also do this, if their taxable income was below the range, very easy. If their taxable income was below the range, we'll take 300,000, which is QBI, times 20%, or we're going to choose their taxable income, whatever their taxable income is, or their modified taxable income is, times 20%. And we'll take the lower of these two figures. This is if they were less than 315, less than the range. So I just showed you if they were less than the range, this example within the range, and if they're outside the range, their QBI would have been 20,000, 20, okay? Let's take a look at the next topic, and this is limitation for specified service business. So all the examples that we work up to this point, we assume that all the business we are working with are non-specified service business, non-SSBs, non-SSBs. So non-SSBs, they still get a deduction, although they exceed a certain threshold. We're going to see with SSBs, think about IRS don't like SSBs. Not really, just kind of something for you to remember. Or Congress don't like SSBs. Then don't like specified service business. So if you're an SSB, you're going to be in a, in, in, in a lousy situation if your income in, uh, exceeds a certain threshold. So this is the overall idea. Let's take a look at it. For high income taxpayers, Section 199 exclude any specified business a specified service trade or business, sometimes it's called SSTB, I just called it SSB, from the definition of a qualified trade or a business include those involving, again, we looked, we looked at them, health, law, accounting, actuarial science, performing art, consulting, athletes, financial services, brokerage, all these, all these, uh, all these uh, uh, trades and businesses, they are considered specified service business because the involvement of the owner and the reputation of the owner is on the line. And that's why, that's why what I told you, as a YouTuber, I am considered an SSP because the reputation of my business is based on me personally. Okay? So any trade or the business where the business principal asset, there we go, is the reputation of one or more of its employees or owners. It's called an SSP. Uh, again, for some reason, architect and engineers, they are excluded. I guess George Costanza is going to get away with it because, you know, he's an architect. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, remember this, that architect and engineers are excluded. So how do we perform this computation when it comes to SSBs? Um, yes, architect and engineers. Um, remember, if we are below the range, we are good. So simply put, for SSBs, let me just put it right here. So I'm going to do married, fine, and jointly as an example. This is 315. 415 okay so we could either be below 315 within the range or more than 415 if we are 315 and below and and less it's easy it's 20 percent of qbi or 20 percent of modified tax of income whichever is lower if we are above 415 no deduction for, for you as a student, it's easy. If you get a CPA exam, they told you it's an SSB, they told you their tax, modified taxable income is 416, look for that zero number, okay? If we are within the range, we're going to have to do some computation here. So 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 this, what, what, what I'm going to be doing next is something to deal with this area here, okay? We're going to be doing computation when it's more than 315, but less than 415. Or if it's single, it's a different phase out range, but you guys get the point. So in computing the qualified business income with respect to SSP, the taxpayer takes into account only the applicable percentage. So we have to compute something called applicable percentage. So this is a new term. Applicable percentage is different 
than the reduction ratio. So we're going to have to compute something called applicable percentage of the QBI, what, what applies of a QBI and the component of the W-2 wages. So we're going to be looking at this applicable percentage. What applicable percentage of QBI applies? This is what the applicable percentage is. Now, how do we compute the applicable percentage? So the first thing you have to know is, do you know how to compute the applicable percentage, which is different? This is different. I'm going to write it right here. Different than the reduction ratio, which we're going to see the reduction ratio to in this computation. So basically, we are doing two computation. One is the applicable percentage. What amount of our wages is subject to QBI, basically the applicable percentage of the proportion of the wages. OK, so here's how we compute the applicable percentage. We're going to take 100 percent minus taxable income before QBI minus the threshold divided by either 100,000 or 50,000, whether you are married filing jointly or other. Other means single, anything other, anything other. OK, so that's the first thing we have to compute. We have to compute this applicable percentage. And once we go through that applicable percentage, once we compute this applicable percentage, that second thing we do or the next step we go over, believe it or not, is very similar, is very similar to what we did here. So we're going to have two steps, basically find the applicable percentage. And after the applicable percentage, we're going to go through those, what are those steps? Yeah, those one through four, those steps. Um, one, two, three, four, S -s -s practically the same steps. Okay. But let's work at few examples to see how this works. Let's work. Let's work at this example. Let's start with something very straight, simple and straightforward. Stella is a CPA and operates her own accounting firm. As a single member LLC, Stella reports her income, income firm operation as a sole proprietorship. Stella has QBI from the accounting firm of 540. She reports W-2 wages of 156 and the unadjusted basis of property used in the LLC is 425,000. Stella is married and will file a joint return with her spouse. Their taxable income before QBI, before the QBI deduction is 475 and their modified taxable income is 448. Determine Stella's QBI deduction for 2018. Well, I'm going to tell you, you should be praying if this is going to be on your on the CPA exam. OK, so I'm going to ask you, the listener right now, what is the QBI deduction for this couple? All right, good. I hope you know the answer is nada, zero, zip. Why? Because their taxable income, they're an SSB. Remember, she's a CPA, accounting CPA, they're considered an SSB. 315 to 415. This is the phase out range and their taxable income is 475. It's done. They have no deduction. OK, they have no deduction. Let's take a look at another example. Jennifer is a CPA and a single member and a single member um, at, and a single taxpayer, not single member, uh, using the standard deduction. In 2018, her CPA practice generated income of 162 and she has no other income or losses. All right. Jennifer's taxable income before QBI is 150. All right. So we're good. So she's single taxpayer 150. Jennifer employs an administrative assistant in her practice and pays him $75,000 in wages. The unadjusted basis of depreciable asset employed in the practice is 30 thousand. So the first question, what is Jennifer qualified business income deduction? Well, simply put, let's just, this is pretty straightforward. Um, a qualified business income or QBI, okay, QBI is 162. So we're going to take the QBI 162. That's the first thing you, you start with. You look at QBI and you multiply it by 20%. That's the first thing you need to know, which will give you 32,400. Then you take modified taxable income and here modified taxable income is 150 and luckily for for if you get this question also you should be happy the modified taxable income is less than 157500 the modified taxable income is 150 150 is less than 157500 i have no nothing to worry about i don't have to compute the w2 slash capital investment limits because the taxable income for this taxpayer is below the threshold. So modified taxable income is 150, oh, I'm sorry, 150 times 20%, and that's equal to 30,000. So what is Jennifer's QBI? 
the lower of these two, the lower is 30,000. Pretty straightforward. We're done. Okay? Now, determines Jennifer qualified business income deduction if her CPA practice generated net income of 312,000. Okay? Now, think about it. If Jennifer taxable income generate 312,000, well, what's going to happen is that's going to put her modified taxable income, okay, before QBI above 207,500. And what does that mean? Well, it started at 157,500 and the range goes to 207,500. If she's making 312 from the business, it means that her 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 modified taxable income it's going to be more than 207,500. Jennifer is single, no deduction for Jennifer. So under B, there is no deduction, which is the most interesting example of all. This is going to illustrate the phase-in as well as an SSB phase-in limitation. Tad, a single taxpayer, has a taxable income before QBI deduction of 187500 Tad is a CPA operate and accounting practice as a single member LLC. So Tad is an SSB business. During 2018, his proprietary report net income of 150 W2 wages of 12 125 and 10,000 of qualified property. What's Tad's qualified business income? Well, we're going to first find the applicable percentage. Applicable percentage. Why do we have to find the applicable percentage? Because notice Tad is between 157500 and 205500. He's within the range which is 187 500. So what's the applicable percentage? Well, it's 100% minus taxable income 187,500. 187,500 minus 157,500, which is the limit, divide by 50,000, the range for single. And that's going to give us 100% minus this is 60%. That's going to give us 40%. That's the applicable percentage. What we do now, we're going to take QBI, which is 150 times 20%. Remember, we always call this the first computation. And we're going to multiply it by the applicable percentage, 40%. And that's going to give us 150 times 20% times 40. That's going to give us 12,000. This is the QBI deduction. Now, at this point, at this point, you need to make you need to make one additional computation. You need to make sure that this number here one, this number here one, does not uh, uh, does not exceed does not exceed okay does not exceed the W two uh, the W two wages and the uh, uh, qualified property limit. So simply put, you have to go through. Let's go through another computation. Let's go through number two. Number two, it says, if you remember the second computation, it says um, you take 50% of W2. W2 for this example is 125 times 50% times the percent times the applicable percentage. Let's let's find the answer, the number here. 125, 125,000 times 0.5 times 0.4 equal to 25,000. Let me just do this one more time. 125 times 0.5 times 0.4 is 25,000. This is 2A and 2B will take 125 times 0.25 plus times 40% plus 10,000 times 2.5% times 0.4 times 0.4. I don't know this number it's gonna be less than this. Okay, so we're gonna be using this number. As long as your your computation in one as long as your computation in one is less than your W two limit. So as long as twenty percent of your QBI is less than fifty percent of your W two limit or less than step two, you can you can stop right there. You could say I'm done. You can say I'm done. Okay. What happened if that's not the case? What happened when you what happened if you computed if you computed the uh, if you computed this if you computed 20% of QBI and what you find out is that number is greater 
so 20% of QBI 20% of QBI is greater than 50% of your W-2 wages. The IRS will say you're not paying enough wages. That's what the IRS would say. They say you're not paying enough wages. We're going to limit you again. So let's change this example a little bit. So let me just erase this. Just change this example to show you how to go through the second, second, second uh, limitation. So let's assume everything the same, except I'm going to change something slightly in this example. Make wages equal to twenty-five thousand. Okay, we just equal to 25,000. Now we're going to go through the second computation. I'm going to go through two. And I'm going to say, I'm going to take my W2 wages, which is 25,000 times 50% times 40%. So let me do this computation. 25,000 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.4. That's going to give me 5,000. And I know if I take 25,000 times 0 0.25 times 0 0.4 plus 10,000 times 0.4 times 2.5 percent that's going to be less than 5,000 let me just double check 25,000 times 0 0.25 times 0.4 yes that's less so it doesn't matter I don't have to go through this computation I know now that 20 percent of my QBI under this scenario is greater than my 50% of 50% of W2 wages and my 2.5% of tangible property. The IRS says, look, we, you're going to have to go th through another computation. You're going to have to limit your QBI deduction because you are not paying enough wages and you don't end or you don't have enough tangible asset. Now you have to go. Now we have to go through that limitation again, another limitation. So now we're going to go through the four steps that we learn in the prior prior chapter so what are those what are those four steps remember step one step one you take your uh, no in this situation step one you take your 20 percent of qbi that you computed so 20 percent of qbi is 12,000 and you subtract from 12,000 uh, you subtract from 12,000 the w2 wages the w2 wages for the purpose of this example is 5,000 okay 12,000 minus 5,000, uh, which is equal to 7,000. This is the access. We call this the access. Okay, we call this the access. Then we're going to go through step two. And what is a step two? Step two is to, de to, to determine the ratio. And how do we determine the ratio? Well, we have to find out how much are you in the phase, in the, 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 how much are you within the range? Well, if you are within 187, so 187, 500 minus 157 500 let's see how much you are within the range because the range is only 50,000 here the range is 50,000 so if we are dealing with 187 500 minus 157 500 we are 30,000 within the range so step two 30,000 divided by 50,000 because we're dealing with a single you are 60% within the range we call this the reduction ratio now step 3 we'll take the access just basically what we did earlier we'll take the access which is 7,000 times the reduction ratio sorry just keep skipping here that's gonna give me 4,200 4,200 4,200 then step 4 this is my final, my final, uh, my final deduction, my final QBI computation. I'm gonna take my QBI that I computed earlier, the first one, which is twelve thousand, but I cannot take twelve thousand. I'm gonna have to reduce it by four thousand two hundred. So I'm gonna take twelve thousand, twelve thousand, twelve thousand minus four thousand two hundred. That's gonna give me. QBI of 7,800 if my math is right. So what happened under the second scenario when I changed the wages to 25,000 the IRS would say hold on a second you're taking too much of QBI you're within the range and you are not paying enough wages. In the prior example the first example the original example when you had 125 in wages guess what your QBI was okay because <coughs> because <coughs> it was less than 50% of your wages. But if it's not less than 50% 50, 50 of your wages, wages or 
25 of your wages plus the 2.5 percent of your tangible asset you have to go through those four steps so you have to trim down your qbi and i believe this is the most challenging so if you understand this last example uh, then i would say you are good to go again this topic is new um section 199a deduction uh you know i did a lot of reading about it i attended uh, two webinar and i hope this recording would help you um, if you need additional recording please visit my website if you happen to visit there is a donation button please consider donating if you're studying for your cpa exam this topic is expected to be tested on the exam it's expected to be hard in practice challenging in practice and expected on the exam to be challenged as well hopefully i work through between the two lectures i worked over 10 examples i hope this is very helpful if you have any questions email me good luck and stay